Hi. It is prime book prize season and I don't very often make videos around book prizes mostly because I don't like being told what to read and also with some of the prizes I feel like they don't quite match up to my taste very often but the book prize FOMO is real. I've been watching Jack Edwards and Jen Campbell and Lena and like a few other booktubers talk about some of the different prizes and it has piqued my interest. Now I will not be reading full long lists, full short lists. I am just going to hand pick a few books that I'm interested in and that's what I want to show you today. First of all, the Women's Prize for Fiction of the long list has been announced. Maybe by the time this video comes out, the short list will have been announced. I went through all the descriptions and as predicted, a lot of the books are not for me. I don't read a lot of contemporary. I read a lot of genre fiction, but there was a surprising number of ghost books on the list this year. There are a few books on there that seem like slightly odd choices, but I want to talk about the ones that I'm interested in. I've actually gone out and bought some already, so I'll start with those. So first of all, this is not going to be a surprise to anyone. I think if you looked at the long list and had to pick a book for me, it would be well, I guess these two would be the ones that you'd pick out. But the first one is Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Cooper Smith. This had actually caught my eye before the long list was announced. I'd seen this around multiple times. I think every time I went to Daunt, it was on display. Stunning, stunning cover. Let's look at, ooh, let's look up who did it. David Lindroth, beautiful bookmark from Books on the Hill, my new local bookshop. I love when bookshops have really classy, like beautiful bookmarks that you just get with every book. Cause I'm a serial book starter. So I never have enough bookmarks basically. Cause they're all stuck halfway through books somewhere. So this is set across two time periods, which I always love. Uh, and it's about two women who go missing. It's about revenge and ghosts and ancestors. I'm pretty sure it's set in Vietnam. It sounds, totally up my street. I cannot wait to read this. Then the other one is called Salt Lick by Lulu Allison. Quite an interesting cover. It unfortunately comes with the uh, embedded sticker. You know, I'm pretty sure it's done to save cost, which is fair enough, but it's not, not my favorite. This is set in a future like dystopian Britain. Uh, there are alt-right groups and it is also set in the countryside no surprise that this drew my attention. I love the YA book, How I Live Now, which is also like an apocalyptic novel set in the countryside. So I'm very curious about this. The other two books that I was considering but haven't bought yet and might buy when I finish these other ones. One of them is Creatures of Passage. It says it has echoes of Toni Morrison's Beloved, which I haven't read yet, but I do own. It's set in Washington, DC. There's a taxi driver. Again, there's like a haunting or a ghost. Sounds really interesting. And the other one is The Sentence, which I have seen in my local bookshop and I've been very tempted. And again, it's about the dead and it's also about a bookshop being haunted by its most annoying customer. I also did some more research into the author and she is Native American and the quotes about her work are just incredible. Like the praise just doesn't end. This is definitely on my potential to buy list. Then I have two from the International Booker Prize. Again, the Booker Prize usually not quite my thing, maybe a little bit too literary for me. I've been reading more and more translated fiction. And so I thought International Booker, I will have a peek. And so I did. Very interesting to see Tilted Access Press and Fitzcarraldo, who are two like smaller publishers, are just dominating this list. I actually um, did some freelance work a few years back with the British Council where there were publishers from different countries coming to the UK and then UK publishers going abroad and them working together and learning from each other on how to make sure more translations happen. And I was just a fly on the wall for a whole week and got to film and interview everyone, which is very fun. And the founder of Fitzcarraldo was there and did a presentation on Fitzgeraldo, which I didn't know that much before. They are the iconic like blue and white covers that you might have come across in bookshops. I actually bought one. Where is it? I actually bought one recently. It was behind me there. Uh, Drive your plow over the bones of the dead. Uh, which is the winner of the Nobel Prize. He was basically talking about how he, I think on multiple occasions, bought the rights to a book 
that then the author of that like would win a Nobel Prize. So he's got a good eye for that. Anyway, I had a look through the long list and picked out two books that match beautifully together. And actually one of them I already owned because I went to Foils and they had a table uh, that was filled with this book, Happy Stories Mostly. Some lots of stickers uh, signed by the author, signed by the translator, which I thought was quite special. It's nice to have that focus on both. And so that's in here. And these are both actually, I don't know. These are actually both short story collections, which is interesting. It says it's a collection of 12 stories that queer the norm. These tales for queer characters in situations and plots conventionally filled by hetero characters. And this is what really got me. A blend of science fiction, absurdism, and alternate historical realism. And this has been translated from Indonesian. And then there is Cursed Bunny, I think. There's another book with a bunny on the cover and a bunny in the title that is doing the rounds on TikTok. And I think this is as well. I keep confusing the two. Anyway, Cursed Bunny. These are, from what I've heard, some very disturbing short stories. And this is translated from Korean and it's published with the support of the Literature Translation Institute of Korea who I actually worked with on a video about a year ago actually about like where to start with Korean books and translation if you're looking for some more recommendations. So that's what I want to read. We're not overloading ourselves. We're setting realistic expectations. If you've had a look at these lists or have watched other booktubers talk about them, I'd be very curious if there are any similar ones or other ones that you've put on your TBR. And I think that's it for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Doey!